what is up everyone so today I have a red dot um, it's a budget friendly red dot it's under $30 $29 to be exact and it's the Pinty uh, red dot we're gonna go over its features its price point um, and whether or not it's a good purchase for you so first of all for $25 or $29 it's it's amazing that you even get any type of technology for that price okay uh, it comes in this cheap box it's whatever you don't care about the boxes um, it comes with your microfiber and an Allen wrench um, for your adjustments um, when mounting this stuff okay and then it comes with your instructions of course so that's what it comes with in the box and then you get the stuff your red dot and then you get your uh, riser mount so as far as the red dot is concerned let's go over some specifications um, it's a three to four MOA and I think it ranges anywhere between three and four MOA only because um, the dot is not a perfect circle and as it increases in brightness there's a tail that's attached to it and it's an odd oblong shape okay the reticle color is going to be red. It has 11 adjustment settings. The magnification is none. So it's a one times magnification, which is nothing. Uh, the diameter of your lens is 22 millimeters. Um, it has a, a parallax free setup, so you won't get no obscurity uh, with that red dot. As you move from left to right, you don't have to be right behind the dot itself. Uh, each value is uh, one MOA so as you adjust it you get one MOA of adjustment windage and elevation um, there's 30 clicks for each windage and uh, uh, elevation it takes one CR2032 battery which is located under the uh, your reticle uh, brightness cap and your battery life is somewhere around 150 to 220 hours depending on the brightness setting that you have it on so I just say 150 because they typically over spec a lot of these things so let's go over some mounting options that uh, this setup comes with at $29 all right so you have your Picatinny rail setup that's mounted directly to the uh, red dot itself uh, you have a large edge here and a smaller edge here that's going to cinch down on a Picatinny rail that's going to look like this on your weapon. Okay. The thing I don't like about this setup being so tiny is since it's made in China, these materials could be softer and uh, the quality control may not be there since it's not going to a manufacturer that cares about their product. Um, at, especially at being a price point of $29 so keep that in mind that you're not paying a fortune for this so quality control may not be as uh, pronounced when they're actually looking at this stuff okay so being a, a small lug here what could end up happening is this could end up hogging out over time of loosening and tightening or what have you and uh, it could can't sideways so this thing could rotate sideways potentially over time and uh, not give you a good zero uh, but that's all speculation nothing has been confirmed I haven't used this enough to actually you know speak on that just keep that in mind when purchasing a budget red dot okay that being said I do recommend using blue Loctite the 242 or 243 whatever it is um, on here just so that way this bolt doesn't back up if you decide to use the one inch riser, it would mount directly onto there. And as you can see, the one inch riser has two uh, lugs or two locking points uh, for the screw, you know, which is going to apply even pressure on this large uh, base plate here. Okay. So as you could see, this edge here is the same as this edge, but on the opposite side, the part that's going to clamp down is a lot larger with the one inch riser okay so you have your stud here or your bolt going across and then you have the same concept here with this little uh, lug being protruded out of the casting okay and then when you you also get this it's a one inch riser 
so let's measure that to confirm it so you're looking at a little over one inch so 21 thousandths over okay and that could be um, because it's not machined maybe uh, flush so when they make these whatever it comes out as it comes out and they don't uh, machine it which could give you that little bit extra or it could be the coating um, I don't know if this is anodized or dipped in some type of uh, like coating or just sprayed because um, that will add a little bit of thickness uh, anodizing not so much but if it's dipped in or sprayed that could add the 21 thousandths for sure okay so this right here is going to be your lower one-third uh, alignment for the sight so if this is mounted on your weapon with this okay your front uh, sight post is going to be at the lower one-third so it's going to be offset it something like this okay so this red dot is going to be over your sight post and your sight post is going to be lower if you want a co-witness sight you're, you're going to have to get a, a smaller uh, rail I think it's like uh, seven eighths or something like that okay and what that's going to allow you to do is allow the red dot itself to align with the front sight post perfectly in line some people like it co-witness some people like the lower one-third setup uh, for field of view and now let's get into the red dot itself okay so of course you have these covers these lens covers that are rubber just like the aimpoint t1 or t2 okay same exact setup or even the bushnell trs all right you have your windage and elevation knobs so as you screw off these caps they're aluminum they're not plastic okay so they're aluminum and you have your adjustment right there same thing with this the the thing I don't like about these uh, caps is since this is a flat um, blade setup you're gonna need a screwdriver typically some of them have like little nubs sticking out where you could use your cap to make those adjustments in this case it does not come with that so keep that in mind all right you have your battery compartment here with the o-ring seal okay there's your battery just like the uh, Bushnell you have your rear glass it's pretty clear for the most part I mean it has no blue hue that I could really see so I'd say it's pretty good and then you have your coating on the front of this glass a lot of your cheaper red dots will not have this coating and what this allows you to do is shoot in the daylight um, because typically what happens is the sun will wash out your red dot and having this type of coating allows you to shoot in uh, sunlight and we'll get into the brightness settings on that so in the rear of the 20 millimeter glass as you can see right here on the left hand side you have your emitter it's protruding out but I mean that's to be expected for a budget red dot all right you have this plastic ring that's inside there's a lot of glare but as you can see the plastic ring right there or it appears to be plastic yeah it looks plastic to me uh, that actually is housing the emitter and it makes your glass or your sight picture a little bit tinier it looks like an eighth inch all the way around okay so that's what it looks like and through here it looks as if the glass is at an angle uh, the offset glass I don't know if I could get that in picture it's kind of tricky to see and I think that's to refract uh, any light from it um, so you don't get any direct light in there washing out your red dot okay so let's go over some of the intensity uh, levels um, I would say one through eight is going to be you know indoor only uh, if you use it outside or in a bright spot it's not going to cut it okay so I'm going to dim the lights and show you that 
uh, we have the indicator dot right here which is going to allow us to align with these numbers to see the intensity so let me kill the lights and turn it on so you have setting one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then the brightest setting which is eleven okay So let me turn back on the lights and then show you what it looks like uh, counting backwards, okay? So 11, you're gonna definitely see in the light. It's gonna be real tiny, something like that. Okay, uh, especially outside. Inside, uh, the dot's not refined. It's kinda hard to pick up in the camera as far as the dot, the dot being refined. Like that's way smaller than what I see. Uh, to be honest the dot should be somewhere about the size of this like in person that's what it looks like on the highest setting but outdoors it looks something like that to be honest it's like it changes a lot when it goes outside All right and then I could still see 10 you should be able to see 10 still and then nine it may be washed out but yeah nine's a little hard to see um, but in person I could still see nine in this lighting and then eight I could still see it seven I could still see it but it's getting faint I'd say seven's max for this lighting as far as the dimness that you want to go uh, anything below seven uh, I would only use if it's like really dim lighting like indoors and then anything above that would be good as the brightness continues to increase as far as that uh, the ambient light but outdoors you're gonna have to run at full uh, 11 because you're gonna lose that dot so as far as the uh, quality of the optic I'd say it's good for 30 bucks um, on a real gun people say it withstands it I think it all depends on which one you get um, you may get a good one you may get a dud it could happen uh, would I recommend this on a real gun not if it's gonna be betting your life on this definitely not I recommend spending money and get a peace of mind or buy a real good quality uh, iron sight set and run those until you could afford a better red dot Okay. Uh, the reason why this was purchased was to run it on a, a paintball gun and I'm gonna do a whole uh, setup of a paintball gun and the reason why I bought one it's gonna be for a riot style weapon but it could also be used as a uh, tool for training you know since nobody could go out and spend a lot of money in shooting ammo uh, all the time uh, paintball is a good alternative to get that practice in as far as uh, weapon manipulation and uh, constant repetition on cycling stuff and how everything works uh, and I do recommend the MagFed only uh, to get that experience or the airsoft stuff I mean uh, but the nice thing about the paintball is you can actually use it for a riot setup uh, as far as like waterproofing and stuff is concerned, I mean, it's probably water resistant, but I do not recommend you submerging this stuff. Uh, the O-ring's kind of tiny here. You could use a coin to take this off or tighten it, all right? But I do not recommend submerging this thing in water. Uh, drizzle and stuff, it may uh, create condensation in your lens, I'm not sure. If you wanna be able to use this outdoors and you find that 11 the brightness 11 is not bright enough for you you could actually uh, 3d print uh, like covers that will clip onto here and then shade it 
so that way you could get um, uh, a dimmer set up here and not direct light impeding on your red dot and that may help you out okay do I recommend this red dot yes if, if you're using it for a BB gun if you're using it for a plinking gun or even like the setup that I'm telling you um, if the reticle ever goes out you could always use this housing to get you in the ballpark uh, God forbid it goes out I mean it is what it is but if you need a resort to using this you could use this as the dot okay um, but yeah I do recommend it at $29 I mean you can't go wrong I do recommend to get the coated glass ones don't buy the ones that are clear just like this rear because uh, you definitely will lose the dot in the sunlight so at $29 that's a real good value that they have that coating and uh, I yeah I mean that's gonna complete today's video I do recommend it uh, if you have any questions leave them in the comments below I'll answer them best to my ability uh, but that's gonna complete today's video if you liked it give it a thumbs up it's greatly appreciated if you want to see content like this and other content I'll be posting in the near future definitely consider subscribing until next time I'll see y'all in the next one